Hey, FRT community, in this video, we're breaking down volume assured pressure support. Everything you need to know. Let's dive in. So what you see here on the board is just this word VAPS. Now what you need to understand when we're talking about VAPS is what does it stand for? I've said this in other videos before and this is what it all breaks down to, understanding what your acronym means. Now when you see VAPS, some of you may think about things such as uh, ventilator acquired pneumonia protocols, right? So you see it's shortened for that sometimes. If you throw it in Google, you may you throw it in the, in the Google search, you may actually find uh, where you'll get some ventilator acquired pneumonia studies. Now, when I say VAPS, I'm responding to the question that I have received multiple times over the past couple of weeks, which is talk to us about volume assured pressure support. And here's what it is, okay? Now, the first thing you understand is like, is, is what are some other names that you might see other than just VAPS? Well, it might also be listed as AVAPS. So on the V60, it's actually AVAPS. And so that stands for um, Average Volume Assured Pressure Support. The key is understanding and breaking down the name. So let's break it down. Volume Assured Pressure Support. That means that the pressure support is going to self-regulate in an attempt to achieve a desired tidal volume. That's what it comes down to. And so this is very different than when we just think about pressure support ventilation, whether it's invasive or non-invasive. We dial in a pressure support and the patient gets the tidal volume that they want. Okay, they the, take the tidal volume that they're able to take. Now, if that tidal volume is not sufficient for that patient, you as the respiratory therapist may go in and increase the pressure support. Increasing the pressure support will further augment the tidal volume, therefore making it larger. And that's what we do. Let's say the tidal volume is too big. Then you, the respiratory therapist, will go in and you will decrease the pressure support which will therefore decrease the amount of volume that the patient receives that is secondary to the pressure support or the aid that the pressure support is giving, okay? So that's typically how it works when we're just talking about PSV or just traditional non-invasive ventilation where you have a set IPAP and a set EPAP. The difference makes the pressure support. And, and that's typically how it works. But VAPS is a mode that will automatically adjust pressure, re pressure support in response to exhaled tidal volume. Okay, This is a closed loop form of mechanical ventilation. Traditional modes of mechanical ventilation were all open loops, which means you tell the vent what to do, the vent does it, whatever happens on the patient's side happens. But closed loop form of mechanical ventilation is when the, you tell the ventilator what to do, the vent takes feedback from what's happening and then automatically makes adjustments, okay? So if you're thinking about VAPS, I don't want you to think about it as much as pressure support alone. I want you to think about it as a pressure support type of ventilation that looks a lot like PRVC, pressure regulated volume control. Now we know PRVC actually automatically adjusts tidal volume, I'm sorry, automatically adjusts pressure to achieve a tidal volume, but this is a pressure control. So let me show you what it looks like. PRVC looks like this. It's a pressure control breath. So what happens is the vent comes down here and it gives a breath gives a breath, it's a pressure control breath, so it's a square waveform and comes back to baseline. Now typically there'll probably be peep, so you're probably starting more like here, but just for illustration's sake, breath goes in, and let's say this is 20. Well, when it releases, there is an exhaled tidal volume. Let's say that exhaled tidal volume comes back at 250. Okay? 
But when we set this up, we told PRVC to target a tidal volume of 400. So what this ventilator is going to do automatically, you have to think about it like there's a little respiratory therapist inside the vent that you're, you're in another room, but this respiratory therapist that's inside this ventilator is going, oh, wait, tidal volume came back at 250 and we want 400. So I need to increase pressure and it will do so. The increase in pressure will increase the exhaled tidal volume. However, that's with a pressure control breath. Now, when you're talking about VAPS or volume assured pressure support, it's the same thing, except instead of pressure control breaths, it's pressure support breaths, okay? So you tell VAPS to give a target tidal volume of 400. You will also set a minimum and a maximum pressure support. So you say minimum and maximum pressure support. And let's just say we go 8 to 20. Okay, just, just throwing some numbers out there. All right. You typically won't have somebody in pressure support who, who needs more than 20 of pressure support. If they need more than 20 of pressure support, they're probably not ready to be in a spontaneous mode of mechanical ventilation. So we got these settings here. And you give the first breath and the exact same thing is going to happen. You're at a peep here. It's a square waveform because that's what pressure support is. It controls the inspiratory pressure. So pressure comes up, over, and down when the patient cycles the breath. Cycle is what ends inspiration and begins exhalation. We know that in pressure control, cycle is eye time. But in pressure support, which is what we're talking about now, we know that the cycle mechanism is actually a patient's inspiratory flow decay. So as their inspiratory flow slows down to a preset percentage, then this cycles out of inspiration and into exhalation. So the vent turns the pressure support off and the exhalation happens. Now here we go again. If the exhale tidal volume is 250, well that's less than 400, and let's say right here we're at a pressure support of 10, then the next breath will be delivered with a higher level of pressure support. So the next breath comes up here a little higher and it comes back down. And this change here that we increase pressure support to should equal or should give us a larger tidal volume. Now let's say it comes back at 300. Then this pressure will go from 12 up again on the next breath even higher. Let's go to 15 until the exhale tidal volume is in the range of this target tidal volume of 400. Okay? And that's VAPS and how it works. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, now how do I take care of a patient that is, that is in VAPS? Okay? Or that is in AVAPS? Well, here's what you need to know when you're looking at these patients in these modes. Okay? And I'm going to draw two different patients and I'm going to show, I'm going to try to break down the difference for you here. Okay. So this is traditional PSV. This is going to be VAPS over here. So we have what we traditionally do where we set pressure support and tidal volume varies. Okay. Now, how do I know if a patient is 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 getting worse or better on pressure support traditional pressure support well what you have to do is you have to look at your exhaled volumes so let's say you have a patient on a pressure support of let's just go 10 and let's just say their tidal volumes are increasing well then that's good right they're able to use the 10 of pressure support effectively and, and their tidal volumes are adequate. And as the lung compliance and as the disease process corrects itself, tidal volumes will go up. This is when pressure support does not change. 
So a pressure support of 10 equals a tidal volume of 250 on day one, but on day two, they're getting a tidal volume of 350. Your patient is getting better. Now, if your tidal volumes start to go down, then that's an indication that your patient might be getting worse. Still on a pressure support of 10, tidal volumes going down, this is bad. Okay, this tells you that your patient's muscle strength and ability to take in adequate tidal volumes is being lost. So perhaps you have a worsening lung disease at this state. Okay, so in this mode, you have to look at your exhaled volumes, pressure support, look at your exhaled volumes to know if your patient is getting better, worse, tolerating the treatment or not. Okay, now over here on VAPS, you still have a set pressure support, but it's a varying pressure support based on exhaled volumes. Your tidal volume is targeted. So your tidal volume should, should, should typically, should pretty much come back around the same time all the time because the vent is automatically doing the job it needs to do to achieve that target tidal volume, which is different than what we talked about over here. Over here, this is open loop, open loop ventilation. The vent does not care what these tidal volumes are doing, even though these tidal volumes tell you about improvements or uh, steps backwards or degradation of your patient. Okay, so you have to understand that. So what do we look for on VAPS to know if our patient is getting better or not? Well, increasing pressure support or decreasing pressure support. See, that's different than what we did here. Here we use tidal volume because our pressure support is set. But now we're in a mode where the vent is going to achieve a tidal volume. So how do I know if my patient's getting worse or not? If your pressure support is increasing to achieve the same tidal volume, then this is bad. Your patient is requiring more pressure support. The vent is doing for you what you would be doing over here. Over here, your tidal volumes are going down. That's bad. I would need to increase pressure support. Well, your vent's already doing it over here. So over here, you need to really monitor what amount of pressure support is being given and is it going up or down. Now, for a patient that's getting better, lung compliance improving, disease process um, improving, then they should be able to start taking better volumes and achieve their target tidal volume with less pressure support. So you will see their pressure support go down and this is good. So you want to always monitor what your pressure support level is when you're in VAPS. Don't let a patient's pressure support just keep going up, 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 up and you just keep documenting what you're documenting and never let it click that, hey, my patient's getting worse because when I started the shift, we were on a pressure support of eight and now I'm on a pressure support of 18. Your numbers are probably gonna look the same. Why? Because the target tidal volume is still being achieved. But your peak inspiratory pressure will be different. Your pressure support will be different. And that's a sign that your patient may be getting worse, okay? So I hope this helps for all the questions around VAPS and understanding how the vent automatically adjusts to achieve target tidal volumes, okay? Think about, the little risk, think about a little you inside the ventilator and you're constantly tweaking to make sure that that tidal volume is coming in where you want it, okay? I hope this helps. Please hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment or two and hit the like button, I'd appreciate it. Great day.